Hey, back to part two of the epic vlog in the garage, uh, braving the not so great weather because uh, there's some assembly taking place and messy smelly glues. So this is the best place to be doing it even though it's not warm. I'm gonna be covering uh, building the raised areas uh, this time round where the buildings are set on top of and uh, get into how I'm painting both the buildings and the road tiles that I built in the last episode. So let's get to it. Right, so we're looking now at the tiles um, after I've primed them and everything, and this is the corner piece that I mentioned in the design element that I don't like being here. This is clearly going to be a road and a crossroads here. Uh, this is the end of like an entrance way down here. This little triangle doesn't make so much sense, so the idea is to cover it up. So I'm going to have some triangular pieces um, of raised area terrain that will sit on top and they'll just cover that up and make it look like a raised area that a building will go on top of. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm using this bit of cardboard as an example, is some have some sort of triangular cut piece here of uh, foam with some cork on top, so you get a good amount of height. Um, and in order to make it look 40K-ish, um, I'm gonna clad it in some strips. Now I've made these strips on a 3D printer, but you could easily just cut some strips of card if you're into card crafting. And this way they go on the outside here. Um, and they add a bit of structure. So again, this will make up for the fact that I can't cut foam straight very well. Um, the 3D printer super helps there. And in order to make these look good, I've 3D printed out these little detailing pieces. Now these are just shrunk down zone mortalis uh, tiles uh, from Thingiverse that I've cut in half. And they will clad uh, the walls uh, like this and leave a recess where the um, cork will go on top and you'll see that when I build it. And then I've got little corner pieces here. So ideally everything is sized and yeah there's gonna be a few gaps because you need to trim these up with a knife but you get the idea. It'll look like a deliberately made uh, 40k area for um, like raised buildings. I've got some staircases that again I've managed to just do a very basic uh, 3D design so they'll fit in the gap and then you'll have ways up. And then the infantry can go up here. Uh, the vehicles can't so it kind of gives a purpose to the infantry for grabbing objectives and buildings and things. And scale-wise, you can see that it's taller than a Space Marine when they're at street level. Um, so this is like, I don't know, 10, 12 foot's worth of, of uh, building um, raised up there. And uh, it should be pretty easy to make them this shape and uh, get a whole bunch of them scattered. So there'll be corner pieces to go here. And then when I have large open playing areas like this, and there's going to be some square ones with some other buildings on. And then some of the industrial styled buildings uh, that are going to be scattered will just go flat on this surface without having to worry about building a base um, and raising it up. So you get a variance in height. Um, and of course it's 40k so the buildings are going to be ridiculously tall, uh, which actually is only like this tall in game terms, um, but it'll look cool. And I'm once again back with the Mitafast uh, or equivalent for the um, super gluing because um, I want these to go off nice and fast and once again using the 90 degree uh, jig to make sure that these line up properly because even though I've 3D printed them uh, it's a very small joint area and ensuring that sets at a, at a 90 degree angle uh, means that I'm going to just rely on this uh, to keep things square so it's straightforward really as, as I said before um, you're putting a little bit of super glue on one part like that and then using the spray on the other part and then pushing the two pieces together you get one or two seconds to make things marry up uh, and stay at 90 degrees properly and then you just pinch them together at a pressure point like that and count to 10 and by the time you're done doing that they will have taken enough. Now full bond strength still does take a little while to form like super glue uh, usually does but this grabs most of the way there um, but you want to leave it full strength a uh, couple of hours or something like that so it develops over time as most glues do and this should hold this nice and firmly so that you can get on with building other pieces and I'm going to be getting on with uh, doing a whole bunch of these, setting them to one side so that I can then clad them with the Zone Mortalis uh, fake walls um, and uh, then build the foam piece to go behind them so these little tiny corner pieces are going to go on like this and then you know, the walls like this and you see that there's a recess here and that's where the cork is going to sit so the foam is the same height as this inner piece I'll cut that to shape and then cork over the top and then we're good to go right with the frame glued up and the cladding on you can see that the walls have gone on fairly well I had one or two uh, little uh, instances where there's a little tiny breakage but that just looks like battle damage so I'm gonna roll with it but you can see it does a pretty good job of covering up 
uh, where the two pieces meet and it looks pretty good. Obviously there's gonna be something inside, but as far as a little raised area on the junction of these roads, that looks pretty good. Probably put a statue or something on there. And uh, next up, I'm gonna cut some foam to go on the inside. Okay, I'm here with the larger one because it's easier to see that I've been working on. I've uh, got some little staircases and stuff. And overall, it's come out pretty good. Got some detailing where I had some gaps to fill. Um, and this has a lip at the top in its design so that the, um, cork goes on top and then the foam goes on the inside. So first thing up is to uh, measure the gaps here exactly. I'm gonna have how big they should be, but I'll just measure up to make sure because there's a little bit of bowing here and there. Um, and I'm gonna cut out the cork piece to match. Okay, that's cut and fit, uh, but because the cork doesn't have that much rigidity to it, there's a little bowing um, in there. So the next stage is to flip it over and to cut a piece of foam to go on the inside. Now this depth here is the same thickness as this purple foam that I've uh, ordered. This is XPS uh, insulation foam for underfloor heating. And I'm again gonna cut out a piece that fits in this recess here um, to give this some strength. After a couple of quick passes with the utility knife, again, recommend this Olfa knife. Um, it's cut and fit, and it's quite a nice snug fit. And then this, as you can see, holds the cork nice and level. So time to get it all glued up. This time I'm gonna go again with the polyurethane glue. So I'm just gonna pop this out and get some glue ready to go on here. Around the edges here with the gator glue and getting it spread out and wet down, then putting on the cork, flipping it over, spreading more and once again activating with water before weighing it down with something heavy so it doesn't move. Okay, we're inside for how we're going to look at painting the actual models uh, for the terrain. So I've got these buildings that I've 3D printed. Um, as I showed in my Age of Sigmar table vlog, um, I hit them with a car primer, a filler primer. Uh, which is bright yellow uh, to get rid of most of the layer lines from the 3D prints and then uh, base them all in black. And what I've got here is a pot of a dark gray. And this is 50% uh, this gray and 50% black mixed together. I'm gonna be going up through the grays and I'll be sponge painting these because these uh, 3D prints layer lines can show up if you start dry brushing too much. So I find that sponge printing works really well and I think it will kind of add to that concrete -y look. So I've got this stuff that's artist sponge that you can get from the craft shop. Uh, if you don't have that, um, a dish sponge that you can kind of tear pieces off of will work absolutely fine. Some water on standby and a nice cheap uh, takeaway lid palette. Okay, so I've got a little bit of water here, so I'll wet the sponge first and then go into the paint and kind of smush it on the palette until you get um, a medium uh, thickness consistency. You don't want it too wet or, or dry. And I'm gonna go on fairly heavy with this because this is the uh, base coat and needs a little bit more water in there otherwise the paint has too much texture and just go over the whole piece and if you are in a rush uh, because these are acrylic paints from the craft shop uh, they dry really easy uh, with a hair dryer and you can really speed up the process that way so I'll go around all over the piece and then um, go for the next layer when this one's dry I'm kind of experimenting as we go here as we come in with the next colour. The sponge is still actually damp from me having washed it out, um, so I'm not going to add any more water. I'm going to go quite gently at first, and the good thing about this is it acts kind of in a similar way to dry brushing in that it catches uh, the raised detail, but you can see it kind of gives a concrete -y effect, but leaves uh, the shadows quite obvious. So. Yeah, overall, um, it, it does a really good job of doing this quite quickly and easily, and it gives that kind of speckly uh, texture that uh, concrete has, and it kind of fits the grim dark aesthetic quite nicely. I'm gonna do the classic uh, two thin coats, so I'll go over this like um, you see here, and um, then once it's dry, I'll give it another layer, and that's where I'll decide just how much shading, etc., I want to add. Right, so up to here I've got an awkward bit where there's a, uh, trying to get in between this roof and this roof uh, without smushing loads of paint. So I'm actually just holding the sponge and folding it into a, a useful shape to kind of push it in there gently. Um, don't be afraid to shape these as you're using them or tear off pieces if that means that you get uh, the right access and the right size. It's like changing your brush size um, to fit what you're doing except you can you know, adjust the size on the fly. Um, and make it kind of customized by tearing off the right size pieces. 
I'm going here with the lighter colour and I think it looks a little stark actually, so I'm kind of just smushing it with the leftovers of the previous colour first, kind of like you would work multiple colours into a dry brush. And again, just going gently over the top and this time really not pressing down very hard. And if it doesn't get into these flat areas uh, too easily, again, I can kind of form a point uh, with, the, with the sponge and get it in that way. But you don't have to worry about putting down loads of paint because if you press too hard trying to get lots of paint on, you're gonna smush a whole load of paint onto the raised edges and it's not gonna look right at all. It's much better to build this up slowly. And even though I say slowly, this is still gonna take me five minutes to finish. So not too bad at all. And the last brightest grey now I've gotten quite thin on the palette and I, the good thing about these is you can kind of use this ridge here uh, to smush off any excess uh, that's in there so you don't accidentally flood your model and here just again as if you would with an edge highlight almost just picking out the most prominent uh, parts like the window frames and these ledges and this divider in the middle and being quite uh, gentle about it so you get kind of a speckledy appearance but overall uh, it's got a really nice shading on it. Right, a little fancy extra step that wouldn't really be necessary, but I'm going to do it anyway. Got some Ethonian camo shade here, um, which is a fantastic all-round paint for this sort of work. And I'm just going to add some streaks. So what I'll do is on a large flat area uh, like here that's starting to look a bit boring, so there's no windows, I will just run this in the top of the ledge like this. And then I will just paint some very small downward streaks uh, like this, not going too overboard. Um, and doing it like this. A key here is to actually start at the point of where you want the run to be and go upwards so that you deposit the lift off part of the paint at the top and you don't end up with this weird little blob on the bottom. Right, and there we have it. Everything's dried. Um, I got um, some metallics done, just uh, metal on a wash. Could do a little uh, brown wash in the recesses for a bit of rustiness. Um, you can see the streaking here. It'll look better once it's varnished and everything is the same finish. And I just did some squiggles of white paint to look like graffiti on the back of the building and paint the doors. So not a lot required, but once it's at table distance, you know, it's gonna look absolutely great once it's up against the, uh, the units. Um, and there's the overall look that you're going for. And you can see that these are quite a good scale once you put the marines up against them, you know, a floor, uh, the doorway is the same size, approximately as a space marine, considering that these are bigger than the, you know, the, the Imperials that would use these actual doors um, in fluff. So uh, I think overall, pretty good match. Right, we're starting on the tiles with the same base coat, but I don't want the colors to come out exactly the same. So I'm gonna try a 50-50 mix of this base color um, and this Payne's gray, which is a dark gray with a blue in it. Um, I will try the same mid-tone and then try the same uh, different highlight here with a slightly blue, this is cold gray, a slightly blue gray on the um, concrete here so that they don't look the same as the building. So otherwise it will get a bit monotonous and this will be a dark, uh, dark tone when we come around to do that next. So let's see how this goes. Okay, come in with a big sponge here. It's pre-dampened again. And I'm just gonna pick up some of that paint off the palette and get that on here and see how it looks. So again, doing the tapping motion so that you uh, don't streak the paint, um, which is less important for the base coat, but it's good to get into the habit, but definitely really key when it comes to doing the highlights. Um, see how this goes down. Okay, it's dried and I think it's looking pretty good. Um, gonna go in now with the mid-tone, this kind of medium gray. Um, clean sponge here so that I don't muddle the colors because I wanna make sure that I can replicate this across the other tiles. And again, just gonna go with the patting motion um, here. The good thing about these cleaning sponges for the kitchen is they're big flat sponges. Um, so you get a fairly even application. You don't get some weirdo random patterns that start to repeat themselves um, accidentally. So let's see how this looks. Right, we're all done. And now while I got free and uh, creative with mixing up my base coats, I definitely recommend doing your mid-tone uh, out of a tube the preset color that way even if there's some variance between the tiles or whatever or the batches that you mix up this will make it look mostly the same and read the same and you're unlikely to get uh, really standout sections that look different so overall you can see the colors quite nice uh, you've got this random speckly texture which actually shows up on camera a lot more than it does in real life it's a little bit more subtle and you've got the shading between all the the curb stones or whatever and i'm going to repaint the road afterwards so time to go in with a brighter highlight and see how that looks 
Right, so this colour is actually quite blue-grey when I've uh, thinned it down, so I've kind of just melded it on the edge of the side of the grey to try and not have it too, too bright. And I'm really going to go gentle here with this because essentially there's not actually that much texture on these um, floor sections or path sections that are going to catch the light um, in different ways. Mostly it's going to be around uh, this path, so I'm concentrating on doing it on the path. And what I'm also going to do is leave this side mostly undone. Um, so that when I do the other tiles afterwards, I've got something to colour match when I do the remaining eight all at once. So I'm just going to dot some patches here and there, again, to add a bit of variety and, and texture, but I'm not going to go ham on it because uh, there really isn't much here, unlike on the buildings, to catch the texture there. You've got your window sills and whatnot. And you want to be careful not to do it too near the edge here because this is going to butt up against another piece, uh, bring one into view like this. Um, so I don't want a hard line here if I can avoid it because it will look weird when it matches up to the other one. So don't go too close to the edge. And um, I think keeping the sponge nice and flat to avoid any uh, lines, uh, that's pretty good. Now if I do have some issues and some spots that don't look great, I'll probably just stipple on some black for some sooting burn marks. Uh, I may even do a little bit of hazard striping here and there if I can be bothered at the end, um, which is usually quite easy with, um, again, sponge painting and uh, some masking tape. But overall, that extra colour just adds a little bit um, of an extra interesting look. And once this dries, this will be way less pale. We'll finish down here with some shaky cam footage uh, to show that although these two pieces share the same mid-tone of the, the tube grey, uh, using a different base and highlight means that they don't look the same and don't look monotonous, but that mid-tone ties everything together. So overall, uh, pretty happy with how this is going to look on the piece. And coming in with a quick addition because the colour balance didn't come out very well in the last one, and you can see the difference here. Uh, this is the end of the episode for this week, and next time I'm coming back with how I did these industrial pieces, which again you can see is a nice contrast. Uh, including this basing texture. I've got some scatter bits to put in here, but uh, this and that grey and that grey and this eventual charcoal grey are all going to look different, um, but uh, not boring. So we'll catch you guys next time.